program for scholarship program for exchange of students, of trainees, of lecturers between Southern African countries and Germany. So other countries which are involved, that's uh, Namibia, and we have seen the South Africa with Rico, and also Botswana and Zambia uh, involved up to now. And so if we are successful, it would be great to have a four years phase together with you to have joint master student thesis, bachelor student thesis, PhD thesis, and especially also work in the field of um, tailing revitalization in the field of hydrological and hydrogeological water balances um, and baseline studies in the field of um, water, mine water filter systems and in the field of um, socioeconomic studies um, regarding post mining um, landscapes and society. So that's a it's a large program we, we are facing to apply for. In the afternoon, we will have a meeting of the MivaNet to discuss our current draft. But nevertheless, this is just my introduction to that you understand the whole framework. And I'm so happy that we have now already 26 and even more here in our uh, seminar. Um, so everybody is interested and I express once more um, that I'm sorry that Ben cannot give his talk, but um, as um, Randy and Patrina already expressed, uh, his daughter is ill and he has to take care for his daughter, which is very understandable. So, thanks a lot. And um, now I'd like to give uh, the floor to Ilko from um, Bloemfontein. Thank you. Uh, I have to stop. I have to stop. It's why you cannot start. Okay. Thank you. Let me see if I can share my presentation. And I want to take that one. And I assume you can see my screen now. Excellent. Thank you. OK, and let's just turn off my. So, OK, great. OK, thank you. Um, this talk is all about flooding of open cast and underground mines, water accounting and water management. Why does it say South African collieries? Well, that's because the research was performed on coal mines in the Mapumalanga air, uh, province. But in principle, it, this is applicable worldwide. Yeah, OK, so. What is uh, recharge? Now, recharge on and mine flooding, open cast or underground is nothing new. It occurs in every mine, starting from the first day the mine was created. Recharge is a natural process, and it's a phenomenon that occurs over the full extent of the mine. Although recharge is often considered to occur equally over the full, full extent of the mine, this is not true. Many factors influence the recharge, such as rainfall and rainfall intensity, surface topography, depth of mining, geological structures, presence of subsidence, surface structures, and the state of rehabilitation in case of an open cast mine. Given the same annual rainfall, the volume of recharge water will continue to grow while the mine is further developed. Flooding an underground mine because of recharge is a very slow and time consuming process. The speed at which this happens is highly dependable on the permeability of the overlaying strata. Yeah, in the table on, your, on, on, the, on the screen, it's, you can quite easily see the time that it takes. For instance, a deep board and pillar mine can take up to 200 years or may not flood, may, may, may flood never. Um, the time to fill column indicates the time that it will take for the underground to flood when assuming that the mining height is three meters and we have an extraction of 66% and a rainfall of 100, uh, 1,000 millimeters or one meter. So you can see it, uh, the recharge water will always increase as mining continue. It will occur over the full extent. It's not constant and can reach huge volumes.
So where is all the water coming from and what's the, what are the water sources? Well, here we have to make a distinction between open cast and underground mining. Both mining methods must deal with recharge from groundwater and both methods must deal with surface water. I like to compare an open cast mine with my bucket model where we have a bucket with little or small holes that is placed in a container with water. The small holes in the buckle, bucket will allow the inflow of water from the container that simulates the form formation into the bucket or the pit. Water will flow in until the water level on the inside and the outside are the same. Adding some water on, at the inside uh, from the top will have a rise of water level in the bucket and the water will use the small holes to flow back into the container. When we add more water, and this is done fast enough, the water in the bucket will rise and we will not have enough time to, 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 to get out the small holes and the bucket will start to overflow, or what we call in the mining industry, decant. Uh, we have different areas in an open cast mining operation. I have four pictures here from the from the left top top. We have the pit itself. On the right, we have the spoil heaps. Left bottom, we have the leveled spoils. And on the right bottom, we have the rehabilitated surface. The surface is mentioning the rehabilitated surface. The state of rehabilitation is also important. Looking at the four pictures, you can quite easily see that you expect um, more recharge on the on, on on the rehabilitation that is shown uh, at the bottom on the right than that we have on the left top. So rehabilitate, the state of rehabilitation is very important. And then the, fi the final thing that we have, uh, the, the, the other area is the final void. Uh, every, well, almost every colliery in South Africa will have a vinyl void after rehabilitation is completed. The size of the void is depending on the thickness and the depth of the coal seam that was taken out. If we look towards the lignite mines in Germany, many of them have one big final void, almost the same size as the mine pit. We used different rates for the different areas of the open cast mine. 70% of all rainfall that falls in on the pit and on in, in the voids is expected to end up in the pit. 60% of the rainfall on the non-rehabilitated spoils, 20 on the leveled spoils, and about 8% on the rehabilitated spoils. When we have a look at the underground mining, recharge is often expressed as a percentage of the rainfall. Rates used depending on the mining method and the depth of mining. Even underground mines have, have a sensitive runoff flowing over, over land as this water may enter the mine via cracks, boreholes, shafts or other preferential pathways. With different mining times, you must also expect different extraction rates. And you can see that in the in the legend, we have I have a picture here that shows you uh, an underground mine, all the uh, pink areas that we can. Oh, sorry, where I, where I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm a little bit too early. I'll I'll show it in the next play, page. Uh, sorry, uh, with the different mining types, you must also expect different extraction factors. Uh, long wall mining. Uh, will support the overlaying strata. Uh, with, with long wall mining, everything is removed and all the, all the support that stabilizes the overlaying strata will also be removed. Um, the chance of a roof collapse, uh, collapse is great, well, it's actually expected. And this will be visible on the surface as uh, a subsidence. So here we have a picture with the uh, long wall mining indicated. The green part is bought in pillar mining and the, the reddish part here is where they did high extraction or where they removed parts of the pillars 
that were still st uh, staying behind. A mining company may use different mining techniques uh, in the same in the same uh, single mine as is displayed here. You can also see the extraction with the stooping that we have here. It, the extraction is about 87%. It means that 87% of all material in the mine is removed. So that's the void space. With a long wall mining, everything is removed. So we have 100% we have 100% uh, extraction. Normal water pillar mining, in this particular case, it's 53%, but it will change from mine to mine. Water in active mines can be detrimental to the safety and can also hamper the production of the mine. Many mines in South Africa started their operations long before the digital area. Mining data was recorded in logbooks, on physical drawings. Sometimes, sometimes the, old, the older ones are even on cloth. And mines changed hands as, as, as time went by. They were sold or traded between mining houses. But the crucial mining information was not always handed over. In later years, the information was transferred to computer files. But even this is no guarantee that all the data is complete and accurate. When mining comes in close proximity or to old mines, there's always a possibility that a barrier get punctured. Now, as we can see here, we have the, the mining and, and, and then the mine direction is, is also indicated. The blue area that you see here is an existing mine that may be flooded. In South, in South Africa law, we have we have uh, well we have the law that we need at least a 30 meter barrier between these these mining compartments. But if the information of the old compartments is not 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 readily available, it is possible that you start mining and that you puncture a, bar a barrier. With all um, problems that can happen. A surface is a flooded area where on which an, an, uh, a surface is flooded by adding a liquid to an area, in our case, water. When an area is completely level without any depressions, water can be added equally over the total surface. And the liquid will be distributed evenly, lay, leaving a layer of uniform thickness over the, the surface. But when the area is tilted, Water will flow from a high end to a low end and will be, concentra and con be concentrated on the low end of the surface. If a surface contains more than one depression, water will flow towards these lowest points. Puddles of water or water bodies will always start their existence and are centered around the deepest or lowest points in a surface depression. It's also possible to turn the statement around. Every lowest point or cluster of lowest points will have a single water body. Therefore, a water body will always be associated with the lowest point. Different parts of the surface, let's call them elements, may drain towards different depressions. Those parts of the surface where water flows toward the same depression are parts of the same potential water body. Even if they are not yet flooded. To make things easier, all water intercepted by the surface and drains towards the same depression will attribute to the water body. It is therefore possible to calculate the volumes of water consisting of intercepted rain for each water body. Although it is needed to calculate the amount of water that falls on the individual surface elements, we will only work with the total volumes of the water body. The Windows Interpretation System for Hydrogeologists, or in short WISH, has the functionality to create 3D surfaces. These 3D surfaces can be created using topographic surfaces, uh, from topographic surface or the geological information, lithological layer, the floor of a mine cavity, or even the roof of a mine cavity. And WISH uses these tins, triangular irregular networks, to describe the surface. A tin consists of nodes and elements to describe the surface. 
nodes of the tin or mesh are fixed in a horizontal plane, but can be adjusted uh, vertically. The tin is the core of all flooding and volume calculations. Uh, on the picture here, we see we see a, a triangle. If you move around, if if you are working in Wish and you move around within the triangle, Wish will calculate for you the value of the of that point in the triangle. As you can see, the the, the, the larger picture, uh, it it contains a part of a tin where my triangles are co colored, indicating a level. If I have two tins on top of each other. I can clear, uh, calculate a value, a volume that's that is captured within the two tins, within the two layers. With a tin, we can calculate the volume of water in an underground mine, as in this picture. The whole mine is flooded, and you will notice that the underground mine and the water body is following the floor contour. But a completely flooded mine is not desirable when the mine is still in to uh, well, still needs to produce coal. In order to keep the production up and running, the main hallways, the conveyor belts, access and escape routes needs to be accessible and thus dry. For this, we have to look at the life of mine plan. The life of mine plan shows in detail when mining starts in certain areas. We also use other drawings of the mine showing the existence and future routes. The picture here, the, the, the green, the green one, the, the bigger one on the on the right will show you the existing mine in green and the expected, the, the life of mine, how the mine will grow, how the mine will uh, keep on producing coal in years to come. You can see the, 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 the schedule legend tells us that this particular mine will still start will, will still be in production around the year 2053. Not only we have an, an uh, not only when the mine starts, but also when the mining stops in a certain area is important. The life of mine plan is therefore used to calculate the rate at which the mine expands and the growth of the footprint. The growth in recharge, and with the growth of the footprint, the growth of recharge must also be expected. Performing the same flooding as in three slides ago, but now with the routes that needs to keep dry, the flooded areas and the volumes are completely different. As we can see, on the right hand side, many parts are still dry. All the parts where we, where we see the excess roads and, and uh, are dry, and we are left with small, well, small, still large water bodies, but a lot less than the completely flooded mine. The life of mine plan, and especially the one when the capacity becomes available is used to determine when the compartments become available. And that can be seen in this picture. The, the, blue, the bluish areas are the compartments that become available, like the one on top where we have 1.6 million cubic meters that comes, becomes available in 2034. Uh, and we also have two compartments that are, are already available the two that starts in in 2020 and the bottom one will only become available when the, the mine is completely um, uh, when they are completely uh, done with mining in, 19, in 2053. Using the life of mine and the recharge and volume calculations, a relationship between the recharge and the water storing capacity can be calculated as depicted here. Here we see the blue line that indicates, the blue line indicates the, the, the capacity 
that becomes available. And we have three scenarios where we have a recharge of 1%, a recharge of 2%, and a recharge of 4%, where we can see uh, the lines, how the, the, the water is accumulating. You can also see that this line will run in problems around the year 2028, when it has no capacity to, for the recharge water to store. But when we add, for instance, an, an, an RO plant, a reverse osmosis plant in the year 2025, we can create a lot of, a lot of space to store, well, no, we, we can take a lot of water away from, from uh, that needed, otherwise needed to be stored underground. And as you can see, we still have, we have space. We have space, uh, if we look at the, at, at the gray line, the recharge of 2%, the average, we can we, we have enough space, at least to the year, something like 2100. But we have a rising trend. And in the future, somewhere in the future, we will run out of space. If we look here at the, at the bottom one, and we look at the water storage capacity remaining, we can also see that the remaining space will become less and less and less. And only when we have a scenario of a recharge of only 1%, we are in the clear. But when we have an average recharge of 2% or even a double recharge, then we will have problems. When we add another 10 megaliters a day in, 20, in the year 2050, we will see that even with the, with the largest recharge of 4%, we will get into an equilibrium and we will have enough space to store any recharge water. Traditional recharge calculations are performed over the entire extent of the mine. The calculations result in a single value of recharge for the combined workings. However, only having a recharge vol volume value that does uh, not give the complete picture and the water distribution in a mine. It does not specify which compartments or parts of the mine are flooded first. Changing the recharge volume calculation to a per depression calculation establish a dis distributed flooding model or method. The total amount of recharge water will still be the same, but the places where the flooding starts are now scattered over the entire surface. Recharge water, also called water make, entering the mine cavity will be collected in small floor depressions. If the recharge is low and the small amounts of infiltrating water will evaporate even before it accumulates on the floor and it is transported by the ventilation system to the surface. When the recharge is higher than the evaporation, the volume of the mine, the volume of mine water will grow and slowly finds its way towards the deeper or lower parts of the mine floor. This raises the questions, uh, question, which section will stay accessible and which section will flood? The process of creating water bodies starts with the identification of recharge nodes on the surface. The recharge nodes are those nodes where water starts accumulating on the surface. Nodes connecting to these nodes will always have a higher surface elevation. And due to the undulating nature of the typical mine floor, many recharge nodes will be identified. Each node and element will have a recharge node assigned. Simply put, the recharge node is the node where water would flow when it is allowed to flow freely. The recharge node is not necessarily the deepest or the lowest node of the tin or the mesh, but will be the lowest node in a depression. The slide display a part of the mine floor with random colors assigned for, to the water bodies or potential water bodies. A square indicates the lowest node for each of the water body. 
When the recharge nodes are identified, the potential water bodies are created. The water body consists of all the nodes and elements that drain towards that recharge node. And the amount of precipitation intercepted by each triangle or element is calculated. Then multiplied by the recharge factor and totaled with the elements draining towards the same water body and uh, be transfer transferred to the recharge nodes. All the depressions are described as possible water bodies and is placed in a list. There's no preference as to which water body comes first. Starting with the first water body in the list, the adjacent water body with the lowest connection is determined. This connection is also the maximum water level used to compute the water holding capacity of the depression. When the volume of the recharge water is less than the capacity of the water body, uh, is less than the capacity, the water body is filled with available water. And when the volume of the recharge water exceeds the capacity, the depression is filled to the maximum level. Because water will start to overflow, all excess water will be added to the recharge water of the connected water body. The water added to the water body is then subtracted from the recharge water. And if the water level in the connected body is at the same level, the two water bodies are merged. The following, water, uh, the, the following water body in the list is then selected and the process starts over again. After all water bodies in the list are processed, we start over from the beginning of the list and water bodies without any recharge water left are then skipped. The simulation finished when all the re recharge water is transferred into the water bodies. The mine that uh, in this example, the mine that we use is, is fictive. It, the mine is a layout, the, the, well, the layout of the mine is a combination of several existing underground workings, as are the surface and the mine floor contours. The site is situated in Mpumalanga province. The total footprint of the mine is around 1,560 hectares, and the mine area is gently, has a gently flowing surface with an average elevation of around 1,750 meters above mean sea level. On an average mining depth of 100 meters and an extraction rate of 72%. Four rainfall scenarios were tested from a low rainfall of 100 millimeters to a high rainfall of 2,000 millimeters. The tin or the mesh created contained 42, well, almost 43,000 nodes and 47,000 elements. The distance between the nodes, 60 meters. The two figures show the mine topography, uh, topography surface and the mine floor in, the, in 3D. The mining depth or the roof thickness, the area used to assign the recharge rates and the final floor uh, geometry with the recharge rate and the individual individual area sizes were used to calculate the expected recharge volume. So although the type of mining is the same for the whole mine, the difference in depth of mining results in different recharge values set to 2, 4 and 8%. The picture on the bottom right shows a green area with the lowest to recharge rate and a yellow area with a 4% recharge rate and the red area with the highest an 8%. The table shows the area occupied by each recharge rate as well as the volume of recharge water generated in each zone by different rainfall figures. After assigning the floor contours and the tin was the tin was then analyzed and the slide shows the potential water bodies in random colors. A total of 3,000 and two potential water bodies. Or you could also say 3,002 3, depressions were identified. Here we have the results of the four flooding scenarios after applying water to the surface and the water was found in it and, and water has found its resting place. 
It shows the expected recharge as the cal as calculated by Wish. The recharge after the simulation is completed and the difference between the expected and the simulation recharge in cubic meters and the percentage of the pred predicted to recharge. The total area flooded, the number of bodies, water bodies left and the number of iterations it took, as well as the number of times the simul simulation needed to go through the list of the water body. This table here shows the list of uh, list of progress of the recharging simulation during the first cycle. The first time we went through the list, the program goes through the list of uh, water bodies, and almost half of all expected recharge water is transferred to the water bodies. The first cycle also resulted in three three thousand and two iterations. The number of water bodies, many water bodies were filled to the brim, and the overflow node and target water bodies were identified. The second cycle had 850 iterations. Only those water bodies with, with a capacity left were visited. 301 bodies were, were merged, and during the third pass, another 110 water bodies combined, and the, total, and the error between the volume that must be recharged and the amount already in the water bodies declined to a 30%. After 21 cycles, or after 20 time, 21 times we went through the list, the absolute difference between the expected and the simulated recharge is smaller than 10 cubic meters. Now, 2,333 uh, 2, water bodies left, and the simulation took uh, just over 4,900 iterations. The four figures here show the water distribution expected after flooding a hundred, with 100, a 500, a 1,000 and a 2,000 millimeter rainfall. And here you can see the results after flooding the 2,000 millimeter rainfall with the largest water bodies identified. The software that, that was developed can be used to predict the locations on the surface where water may accumulate, and it will in, uh, indicate which sections will stay accessible and which will flood. The flooding simulation software relies heavily on the data available from the mine and the expertise of the geohydrologist concerning the recharge rates. The new simulation software can be used not only during the planning stages, but also during the development of the mines to determine the placing of transport belts and which roads can be used to es uh, as escape routes in case of flooding and ultimately save equipment and lives. And although the method described the above calculations, uh, the distribution for the entire workings, the method can also be applied to a smart, smart part of a uh, small part of the mine. In such case, only a small part will have a recharge factor assigned, while the remainder of the workings have a zero recharge rate. This calculates the water distribution in that part of the mine and any recharge water spillage into the remainder of the mine. N a knowledge about the volume of water spilled and where it flows is essential for the safety of workers underground. When the spillage is little, Water will evaporate and be removed by the ventilation system. But when the spillage becomes substantial, the mine may decide to build water retaining walls to keep the active workings dry. Okay, these are my references. And I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ilko, for this very excellent. Um, introduction into stormwater floodings of um, mines. It was very informative and um, great that we had your presentation here. Thanks a lot. Are there any questions from the auditorium? I think the floor is open for questions, also for comments um, and hints, every, everything what you would like to add here. I think you can lift your hand, but you could also just open your mic and uh, yeah, Pose your question. 
So uh, then I will make uh, <laughs> the beginning, Ilko. Thanks a lot. So as far as I understood, um, you have these, how you called it, merging points, where the water is running down into the mine. Yes. Um, how do I have to understand this? Are these shafts or are these uh, holes or is this through the soil? Um, what, what kind of condition have these points that the water is running down? Uh, sorry, now, now you have to you have to explain a little bit more what you don't understand. <laughs> um, that's difficult to explain what you don't understand. Eh? Um, ah, okay. But, but what you are you can... referring to? Are you referring to water that is that is going through preferential pathways, or are you are you referring to water already on the floor of the mine? Now, when, could you go back to the slide where you had all these points identified? Okay, let's let's let's. let's I think these I have been the points where the water is running down into the mine. Uh, let's see if I can get back. Where do you want to go? Ah, uh, go. Yeah, further, further, further. Now we are further, 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 further. I should have remembered the. Um, this is I all, don't think... almost at the beginning. Um, now th there was a, looked like uh, several maps with points and numbers. Oh no, that that that, that I, I I remember. Uh, let's see if I can see that here. Um... And I just wondered. Uh, you said at these points of here, at these points, uh, the water is so. Oh. I oh, okay. it. No, the yes. water is uh, running down into the mine, and you identified them. And how no. do they look like? No, no, no. This is this is not this is not. But it is this is an an, an uh, 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 how should I say? This is an schematic. What you see here, this is a schematic surface, and mm. the the these are when everything is dry, when when there's no water. You can see all these A, B, C, D, E. These are different depressions, okay. and the, the and and the, the the points that you see in between are the lowest point between the depressions. Mm -hmm. So if one ah. if one of if one of the depressions get, is is filled up, and it and and the water level reaches the the level of the of 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 the points in between, it will start to fill to spill over. Mm, okay. And that's and that's what the software does. It 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 uh, it, it it does these calculations. Oh, okay. um, and 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 this is just a schematic map. And basically, it happens. Let me quickly see. It it uh, it comes from this, from where I identify the different the different uh, depressions, and they are all. Indicated here with, with different colors. So this is a okay. depression with its lowest point here. We have a depression. Uh, I don't know if you can see a pointer. Let's see if I can. Can I show a pointer? Uh, yeah, that, uh, that, it, that's work. You, you just can take. I think you. No, no, uh, no, no, no. I do. I, I do. I do have here. You can see this. So I, I hope you can see this. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here you have you have your your uh, a depression. With its lowest point, we have a depression here, and this this brownish color with the lowest point. We have a depression here, and the blackish color, lowest point. So these are the the depressions that that I get from data from the mine floor, and the, okay. the mine floor, the mine floor I get from the mine itself. The mine give mm -hmm. me they have pegs in the roofs. I don't know if you know that they mm -hmm. they they an underground mine they. Uh, every so much meter, they 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 they, they uh, fix a, 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 a pen in the roof, which they measure completely. Well, they 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 measure the height of the of the pen. They measure the mining height, and all these all the information together can give me. They, they, with that, you get an, 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 an file with x, y, and z values, and from that I can create a floor. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, we have a hand lifted here. Johannes from Namibia, Namwater. Post, Nam please, water. your question. Hi, 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 Stefan. Hi, Lukas. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I, I, Lucas, in one of your slides, you were presenting on recharge and reverse osmosis and arrow. Maybe I might have missed the content of that slide. If you can just explain what you were assimilating there on uh, reverse osmosis and oh, recharge oh, oh, and how oh, the brine was, maybe how the brine was handled thereafter. Thank no, you. No, no, I did not. I did not like it like this one here. But I had a slide. I, I did. It, it started with the previous slide, this slide, where we don't have where we have where we the mine is recharging, but the recharge water is much more than the capacity of the mine to store. So what will happen is either the mine will decant or well the mine will flood. So we have to get rid of water. Now one way of to, to get rid of water is to take the water out and then. We have to treat it. Uh, in, in, in South Africa, we have a law that we cannot, we cannot um, uh, just dump mine water in, in the environment. It needs to be clean. So uh, it needs to be cleaned. Let me put it that way. So what we, what, we, what we do, we put it through a reverse osmosis plant, and then it's so clean, we can even use it as drinking water. So to to uh, to make sure that we don't have all the water inside the the workings, we take some water out and we put it through a, 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 a small reverse osmosis plant, and that is what was happening here. Here in in the year 2025, we started the osmosis plant, and you can see there's a kink there's a kink in the in the uh, in the, in the graph here, that's where the, where the osmosis plant started, and you can see that the the the, the lines are more are, are not that steep anymore. So the the reach the the amount of water that needed to be stored inside the mine is a lot less. It, it has been well 10, 10 megaliters a day has been taken out, but even with this we have a problem because. We will run out of space somewhere in the future. This this line here has a rising trend. The capacity of the mine is, is fixed after 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 mining after mining ceases. Uh, when there's no mining anymore, the capacity is fixed. The capacity will not grow. So we, we sometimes sometime in the future, while having this rising rising trend, it will go higher than. The capacity, so we will we will need to need to have a, another plan, and if when we add another RO plant for in in 2050, and you can see here we have another uh, this line completely flattens. So even when we have a recharge of four percent, we are still safe. When we have, when the recharge is not that high, we even we, we take so much water out of the mine that in future uh, the RO plant will have not enough water. So, yeah. I hope this answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's clear now. Uh, okay. Uh, the the other the other one is on the handling of the brine, the waste from the RO plant. Oh no! Uh, that, that that's what that's are they not, thinking then? <laughs> that is not that is not part of my of, well, it's not part of my problem. That's not part of 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 the of the study. <laughs> 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 that's. Uh, but they have they have they have our our plants and uh, don't ask me exactly what they are doing with the brine. They okay. uh, they 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 will have to dispose it on a safe at a safe manner. They will have to store it somewhere because you cannot just dispose of it. It, it, it needs to be. Yeah, it needs to be stored somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. Just to add here regarding our project, um, Ilko. Um, yes. There's the idea to use semi purified uh, mine water, not our uh, purified um, mine water for irrigation, because the mining industry would like not to invest so much probably in the RO plants. What is your. Um, opinion about that. So this will become perhaps a part of our project that we use the semi purified water for irrigation directly on the tailings because they say it makes no sense to use drinking water quality water for irrigating crops on tailings. 
Uh, yes, okay. obviously that is, a, that is a very good idea. Uh, we, we have done uh, research on that um, probably already 15 years ago, and, uh, but they still do not really use it. Um, there are places where it, where it is used, and yes, it's a, it's a good, it's a good uh, um, study really to, 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 to try to use it again and, and see that people start using it. That, uh, but it's also depending on, obviously, on the, on the type of crop uh, that we have. Um, I must say that in, in my particular case that we have here, the, 10, the first 10 megaliters, the RO plant, that is used by industry. So the industry is, has, has taken up, they, they take that amount of water and they, they, they put it themselves through an RO plant for use in, their, in the industry. Hmm. So okay. it's 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 not that that is something that that need to be done by government in this particular case. The second 10 megaliters is that is something something else. Where we have places in 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 the uh, Bitbank area in in Mapungalanga where we have aeroplanes and aeroplanes where the water is supplied to the municipality for drinking water. So it's not okay. that we just that we just uh, Make it as clean as possible, and then we put it in the environment. Then, then it it it, it is used. Hmm. Okay, good. But that would uh, mean you could add if you could also add the irrigation used you water add, into you, your model. Any yes, as 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 long as we can quantify it, we can we can put it inside. Yes, that's especially for Klein Alp. It would be a nice study to do that. Yes, uh, because they use they have a small reverse osmosis. Um, plant there, but there's much more water in the abandoned mine, which could be used also for irrigation purposes. But this can then become a part of our project. Thanks, um, Ilko. But this was a hand here from uh, Patrina from NAST. Please go ahead with your question. The question is with um, one of the participants should introduce yourself briefly. Okay, thank you very much for the uh, presentation. And good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you very much, Lucas, for the presentation. Um, yeah, it really gave some uh, great uh, insights into like what's happening in the like mining industry. Uh, for my from my point, and taking it within the context of uh, climate change, where we're saying we we see projections for warmer and drier, um, like Southern Africa, and like the demand for water in the mining industry. What innovations can we actually introduce to actually reduce the demand for water? Because as we see uh, with the depressions and with the um, lower we seek our mines, more water is actually being trapped underground and taking longer to be introduced back into the water cycle. So I think you already started talking about the reverse osmosis and some of the um, innovations that are sort of going on. But uh, could you actually comment on that more broadly, how we can introduce water efficiency or getting water back into the water cycle uh, much quicker within the context of the declining uh, amounts that will be available into the future. Thank you. Uh, okay, just, just to clarify, um, the water that is trapped, as you can call, uh, as you call it, in the mine, is not something that is used by the mine. That is water that comes from either from surface or from groundwater and infiltrates in the mine. It's if if the mine, if the mining company could could prohibit that from happening, they would have done that because the water is more a headache for 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 them than that it than that it is a a a a, uh, a good thing. So they they rather don't have the water inside the mine. So there's not not something that that I could say for, that a mine can do to to use less water. It's not it's not something that the mine uses. It's something that yeah they they you could you could argue they can get they get it for free, but yeah they don't they they actually don't don't want it. I don't know if that answers the question. Not really. Uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. 
that water is then not it, that water becomes trapped then underground and it's not back in the water cycle yes yeah, so yes that, that you you're you're right but uh, I, 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 uh, okay, I'm a little bit of. Um, I don't. I don't know exactly how to how to how to explain it. Then, uh, because it's it's not something that that the mind says that 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 it needs it needs to have. So it's not something. That you you say you you want you want to make sure that the mind does not use that much water, but for in, the mind is not using it, it. It's not actively. It's it's it it, it is there, and it becomes so much that they have to do. They are forced to do something with it. So then they 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 either put it through a through a plant or some some way to clean the water so that they can release it in the environment so it becomes part of the environment again, or uh, they, maybe they can use it in a irrigation scheme, or otherwise they yeah well the, otherwise they have just a big problem, so they have to get rid of it. There is a follow up question, Dr. Lucas. Thank you so much, Kazai, for that question. Um, to Filler, please go ahead and Catherine thereafter. Okay, um, good morning. Um, thank you, Lucas, for your uh, captivating presentation. Uh, just as a follow up from um, uh, a question asked by a colleague here, one of the operations within a mining environment is, um, uh, besides production, is mine dewatering system. So I was wondering whether um, the software that um, you were using to design all your simulations, does it cater for you know, those mine dewatering systems? Because that's one technique of actually extracting um, that unwanted water from a mining environment. And that could potentially be used um, by other you know, a pro project that would rely on maybe say irrigation or supplying local communities if it's not contaminated. Yeah, that's it. So mine is basically um, maybe just to also uh, drive the point home. I was expecting to see a mine dewatering uh, kind of uh, aspect within your within your models. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh Mine dewatering is not okay. It's, it's not really part of the recharge thing that we had that that I have here. But uh, most most of the the recharge that we that I am looking at is after the mine ceases to to produce coal. Uh, in this particular event, when we talk about the, the coal and pool mines, um, but active dewatering. Yes, it happens and it happens a lot. Uh, for instance, if we go to the Northern Cape, we have quite a few open cast mines there that are dewatering at, at a huge rate. Uh, but dewatering in, for instance, in Mapumalanga is way more difficult. We are in a fractured rock system. Uh, and as long as you, as the mine does not hit a fracture or some or, or, or a water bear, uh, bearing fracture, then there is no there is no no no, no water in the mine, and or at least not 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 enormous amounts of water water that they can't handle. Uh, the, the problem only co comes in when they get through such a, such a fracture. Now to dewater. You also need to dewater the fractures, and that's not that easy because you have to target these 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 fractures. And to do that from surface to start dewatering is not is not an easy easy thing. Um, so, yeah, dewatering is a, is an option, but not very often used in 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 the coal mines in the Mpumalanga area. Thank you, Lucas, and thank you so much, Mr. Tafila. I'll go to Ms. Catherine for her follow-up question. And thank thereafter, you. we'll have Emanuela. Thank you, um, Prof. Lucas. My name is Catherine, and uh, my question is quite simple. I'd like to know the flexibility of the model 
if it can be applied. I know you said it was developed for mines, but I would like to know if this can be applied to an, maybe an urbanizing catchment to focus or predict uh, floods. In, in, in theory, it can, but there are many other models that can do that already. So uh, I would not use I would not use this this model. Uh, this model looks at, at at a different scale. So if we are really going going catchment size scale, don't use don't use this this model. This model uses uh, also the the coordinate systems that we use. We use a an, an very fine model that is that with a high resolution for inside the mine mining area. Uh, I, I would not advice using it on on uh, catchment scale areas no thank you miss catherine it's the same question okay so i think those were the questions um in the room probably just before we wrap up from this side uh lucas i just want to find out you made reference to um the water quality thereafter being as good as um no drinking water but i was just in preparation for this particular meeting looking at some of the reports that were put forward to parliament in terms of the problems associated with um uh compliance so on the regulatory side of things what are the challenges that are being um encountered in the south african context because maybe in this particular case if we are giving a scenario of yes this is this would be the ideal we can um process, purify, and ensure that there is limited pollution. But the latest report to Parliament indicated that there are still issues with compliance and um, uh, contamination coming from the mining sector. Could you speak around the regulatory framework and the challenges um, related to the same? Uh, yes, we still have lots of problems in the mining industry. And uh, although none of the mines will actually will 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 actually say yes it's it's happening they will not advertise it anyway but uh spillages happens from time from time to time and, and probably more often than you think um that's that yeah that's that's how how it, how it works um it's not it's not good we don't we don't like it obviously um but it happens so uh, it's not that we try to do everything about uh, that what we can to, to 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 prevent that, but that's more a mining problem. Uh, the the way the mine the mining is is uh, is is performed, and keep in mind that uh, I'm a geohydrologist, and we would like to operate a mine completely different from from a geohydrological point of view. We would like to do it completely different than what a mine wants to do it. Uh, if I can, if if I see a mine and if I can develop a mine, I would sink. I, I I would sink my shaft, and then I would mine to the deepest point straight away. I would go to the deepest point of the mine that that I would like where I would like to go, and then I would walk back from the deepest point. I would walk back to surface, so that any excess and any anything I can store straight from the deepest point. Can, so that I, I don't have to take that all to surface. But from a mining point of view, it's completely different. The mining company, they have, they, they, they have, um, um, they're on the stock exchange. So people have stock and they have investors and the investors want to return on their money. So they mine according to their plan to get a very, uh, to get the quickest return of their investments, and as a geohydrologist, I can say what I <laughs> what I want, but money speaks a lot harder than that I that I can speak. Thank you so much. Um, we hand over back to you, Stefan. I don't see any additional hands from 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 the center room this side. We can't hear you, Stefan. 
Sorry, uh, yeah, I just okay. switched off the mic, uh, so you should hear me again. Thanks, um, Renny. Um, is there any more question here or comment in the in the group? I don't see anything. But we had a very interesting um, conversation. And I think there have been a lot of ideas and also um, comments discussed. Thanks for all of your answers, uh, Ilko. You see, it is an important um, issue you it have is. given a lecture on today, and um, we are happy to have you here um, today as lecturer for us. But I think we also uh, finalized our hour, and um, then I would just finalize our meeting today. Thank you very much again, Ilko, and um, we will organize the next meeting according also to the progress of our of our project application and uh, inform everybody in time uh, when we have the next uh, meeting. So again, thanks to all of you and I hope to see you soon back in Namibia or South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, wherever you are from or if you come to Germany in Germany. Okay, thanks a lot also to our NAS colleagues for the organization, perfectly done again. Great work, thanks uh, Patrina, thanks Rennie to you all and see you soon. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much, colleagues.